DVTs or deep vein thrombosis. So as the name suggests, a DVT is a deep vein thrombosis and a thrombosis is a blood clot in the deep veins versus the superficial veins of the body. And the significance here is that deep veins getting blood clots versus superficial veins uh, have a higher propensity to cause a pulmonary embolism, so they are more dangerous. And a pulmonary embolism is just a blood clot that has gone to the lungs. And that's when it gets life-threatening and it's the most common complication of DVTs. And DVTs are treated differently than superficial thrombosis. Usually superficial thrombosis, you don't need any treatment. The clot dissolves on its own. DVTs, usually you need to put them on some sort of blood thinner, but I will get to that in a second. Uh, back to DVTs, they can happen in the lower extremities and then they can happen in the upper extremities. And why? They usually have a lot of risk factors associated with them. And if you want a complete and extensive list factors of all of the things that can cause blood clots, look at the modified Wells criteria. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the Wells criteria and the PERC criteria and deciding whether you need to do a workup for a pulmonary embolism. But the modified Wells criteria really looks at all the risk factors surrounding a DVT, but a lot of them are going to be the same thing. Uh, do they have recent travel, recent mobilization, recent hospitalization? Do they have DVT-like symptoms or are they pregnant? that put you at a higher risk for blood clots? Do they have a hypercoagulable state? Do they have factor five, for instance? Uh, so just looking at those sort of things, or oh, another big one is hormone use, so birth control use in younger individuals puts you at a high risk for blood clots, or if they use any hormone use in older individuals when they're going through menopause, another high risk for blood clots. So pregnancy, uh, hormone use, recent mobilizations, hospitalizations, surgeries, oh, and malignancy, so if they have any risk of cancer. And again, it can happen in the upper extremities or the lower extremities. Lower extremities are way more common than upper extremities. If it's gonna be in the upper extremities, it's gonna be a blood clot in the axillary or subclavian veins. Uh, and then they might have the risk factor of an indwelling catheter around this area. Lower extremities, it could be in the gastroc, popliteal, femoral, or iliac veins. The closer it gets to the upper area of the lungs, so the iliac veins being the most common to cause a pulmonary embolism, the higher the risk factor for the pulmonary embolism goes. So if you just have a DVT in the calf, that's a low risk. But if you have a DVT in the femoral veins, that's a higher risk for a pulmonary embolism. So when it comes to the symptoms of a deep vein thrombosis, the beginning signs are going to be some swelling. And then they might have a little tenderness to palpation of this area. And then you can talk about a positive Hamans sign. And this is when the patient has pain with dorsiflexion of their foot. So if their DVT is in their calf and you dorsiflex their foot, they may have pain with this. Although don't use Hamans sign too often in decision making. I would definitely put it in your chart always when you're evaluating for a DVT or not, uh, because it is not that sensitive and specific. But it's it's something great to chart. Um, when it comes to tenderness to palpation, um, you just grab their legs, grab their calf, grab the inner part of their legs. If there's any tenderness plus some swelling, then you need to have DVT uh, on your differential, especially if they didn't have any me mechanism of injury and it came on insidiously and they don't know where the swelling and pain is coming from. And another useful trick that I use, if I'm ever curious as to if there is actually any swelling, because sometimes patients like it's so swollen, I'm just like, eh, it looks the same to me. Um, I will take out a tape measure, I actually bring it to work. Uh, and I wrap it around their legs and measure one leg, and then I go and measure the other leg. And any swelling that's greater than three centimeter difference is a high, high suspicion for a deep vein thrombosis. So if you think, oh, there is no swelling and it's the same on both sides and they don't really have any other risk factors for a DVT, this is also something great to put in your chart. Be like, there was actually no swelling and I, I measured it. So I just didn't look at it, I measured it and put those measurements in your chart as well. Sometimes the deep vein thrombosis can become so bad that you have discoloration. 
Usually the discoloration turns white at first, um, so that it gets a little pale just because there's not a good blood flow coming out of that area because it's been blocked by that clot. Or uh, if it progresses to a bluish tint and sometimes these areas can cause uh, venous gangrene. So when it's white, it's called phlegmasia albadolens. And when it turns into a bluish color, it's called phlegmasia cerule dolens. And those physical exam findings are for more extensive DVTs and ones that might need more emergent treatment versus just putting them on blood thinners. And this is a good example of a DVT that probably showed up in the calf. In here, I wouldn't even take out my tape measure to measure this because there's obvious swelling on the right side of this patient, a little discoloration, and I bet this patient probably has some tenderness to palpation in this area, if not from the swelling, but from the DVT itself. And this is a, another picture of a DVT, likely more proximal in nature, as you can see some obvious swelling and some discoloration here. And here you can see that physical exam finding that I was talking about before the phlegmasia cerule dolens, uh, you can obviously see some swelling here, but really what I want to point out is the bluish tint that you see on this patient. So this patient will need blood thinners for sure, but maybe an embolectomy to take away some of the pressure and the discoloration this patient is experiencing so it doesn't progress to something like venous gang gangrene. And this is a great picture of, again, that complication that we saw before and the bluish discoloration and obvious swelling. Um, this patient had a post-op picture and a pre-op picture, and it was after an embolectomy. And you can see that coloration of his leg return. You can see some of the swelling going back to normal. Um, this picture really just shows how serious DVTs can become and how we need to recognize them quickly and possibly treat them just as quickly after that. So when it comes to the treatment of DVTs, usually you're just starting them on anticoagulation. So what I do in the emergency department after I have a positive DVT diagnosis from that ultrasound that you ordered, you are going to want to start them on some sort of NOAC. So uh, Eliquis or Xarelto, but usually I want to start them on something quickly here in the emergency department. So I usually do a shot of low molecular weight heparin, I like Lovenox, and then I send them home on an Eliquis starter pack. Uh, we have a lot of uh, free prescriptions for the starter packs. And if they don't have insurance, you might want to think about bridging them to Warfarin, but this is really an older style of practice. You may see it on your board still. Really what we do is start them on Eliquis or Xarelto after I give them that shot of Lovenox. They're in the emergency department. Uh, if they're pregnant, you're going to want to always use Lovenox. If they have any contraindications to anticoagulation for whatever reason, then these patients need to be started. The workup of putting an IBC filter and then Sometimes if you have those physical exam findings of the blue discoloration of the leg, then you are going to want to consider thrombolytics versus embolectomies. But at that point, you are just paging the vascular surgeon for their input at that point. And that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you press the like button at the bottom. And if you like all of our videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, and that's it. See you next week, guys. Thank you.